Peter Lavelle. Cleaning house or political coup threatening democracy? Take your pick. President Donald Trump had the constitutional authority to fire the director of the FBI, James Comey. Did Trump lose confidence in Comey, or was it merely a crass political gambit? Crosstalking the firing of Comey, I'm joined by my guest, Ed Martin in St. Louis. He is a former chairman of the Missouri Republican Party, as well as a former member of the Republican National Committee. In Tampa, we have Scott Rickard. He is a former American intelligence linguist. And in London, we cross to Interjit Parmar. He is a professor of international politics at City University London. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Ed, let me go to you. Uh, I've been watching uh, uh, yeah. cable news news in the United States, it looks like the country's having a collective heart attack or losing its mind. The, the hyperventilation yeah. is really quite amazing. I mean, is the United States actually facing a coup? Please answer. Go ahead, Ed. <laughs> Well, I, th I, I think we're seeing a nervous breakdown of the mainstream media and yep. the left, including, by the way, some of the establishment Republicans. I mean, yep. look, it's very simple. Always simple answers, simple explanations are better. And I think that everyone, you know, I was looking up this morning, Howard Dean, the famous yep. leftist Democrat, yep. 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 called Comey, Comey's behavior despicable. I mean, everyone knew Comey had become, for whatever reason, damaged goods. Some of it was his, I think, good intentions. Some of it was, you know, the other day, last week, Huma Abedin was dragged through the mud and he claimed something that the head of the FBI under right. sworn testimony in front of the Senate that within six or eight hours the, the FBI had to write a letter and say we didn't mean to say that about Huma Abedin. Now I'm not for defending Huma Abedin. I am for an FBI director who's not lost his way and so I whatever the timing of this yep. I think that's kind of extra but you're right there's a kind of meltdown on the on the left and the center and I think again it shows more about the opponents of Trump than it does about him. I think extremely well said. And Georgina, if I go to you in London, uh, Donald Trump had the, has the constitutional authority to fire the head of the FBI. Uh, and he doesn't really have to give right. a reason. He really doesn't. But we do know that the new deputy attorney general gave his assessment of what he thought of the director. And you know what? The director of the FBI reports directly to the deputy attorney general. And the deputy attorney general passed on his thoughts to the current attorney general. And, and Mr. Sessions gave it to Mr. Trump. And Mr. Trump read it. I'm sure his staff did. And they came to the same conclusion, that, this, that uh, John, uh, James Comey had lost his way, had, had, had gone way beyond his authority, and he did become politicized, if he liked it or not. Go ahead in London. Thank you. Um, the key issue here is timing. It's not as if uh, uh, Director Comey hadn't kind of overstepped various boundaries in the past. Uh, he had been criticized by the, by the Trump campaign, and then he was congratulated by them uh, just ahead of the election. He was retained until now or uh, uh, in the job. But the timing of this dismissal is a very important one. Even though President Trump has the constitutional authority and he can do what he did, the key issue is why now? And I think I would take issue with you a little bit that okay. there actually have been a number of different um, stories coming out about the the sort of uh, the sequence of events and statements which led to the dismissal of uh, the director. Uh, who wrote the actual dismissal letter? Who uh, Was it at the behest of President Trump or was it independently written? I think there's an issue here and, uh, and I think it plays to a deeper issue than probably we've we've uh, managed to see in the American or even the British media up to now. And that is Peter, that this administration... Peter, may I add something? Ha Hang on, let, let, let him finish his point and I'll let you jump in. Go, please finish your point. Okay, okay. Thank you. I think, I think the, this adds to a sense of drama and crisis around the Trump administration. And I think that is the, probably the most damaging thing to this administration among those who are now calling for uh, all kinds of heads to roll. Okay, let me, let me go to Scott real quick before we go to Ed here. I mean, I, I think what we heard in London okay. is absolutely true, but the drama is coming from the critics of the Trump administration. It's not the Trump administration that's generating this, okay? That's at least my opinion. Scott, jump in. 
Well, as much as I uh, uh, despise the uh, administrations as it would have been under Clinton or Trump, you know, these uh, Trump was ill prepared uh, to actually become the president, obviously, or he would have replaced uh, individuals like James Clapper and individuals uh, like uh, Comey right off the bat. Obviously, Comey has been uh, inept uh, since Whitewater, uh, and uh, he's also been inept uh, throughout this uh, investigation of Hillary Clinton. He's proven to be ineffective, uh, and uh, certainly he's he's uh, crossed many boundaries. So this is an individual who deserved to be fired uh, uh, a long time ago, uh, even by Obama. Uh, these are individuals, uh, if you look at, at, at the, uh, the respect to the uh, Justice Department, for example, when you're looking at everybody in the Justice Department involved, yeah. Sessions is absolutely not representative of any kind of justice in this country. And certainly his predecessor, uh, she's not any, any kind of representative. This is an indiv these, are, these are institutions that are supposed to keep the, uh, uh, the legislative and the executive branch in check. They're actually supposed to actually uh, 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 take people to uh, be accountable for their actions, and nobody's been held accountable by any type of, and any stretch of any kind of imagination in the past. And this is something that dearly needs to happen, but unfortunately under Trump, I don't think it'll happen as well. Okay, I I'm going to preempt everybody, and I'm going to go to Ed in St. Louis. Everybody's going to say he was fired because of the investigations into Russia, okay? And this is what we've heard a lot here. Right. But you know, it's counterintuitive. I believe the following. That, of course, the, the White House knew that this was going to be mentioned, is going to be say, this is the reason why he did it. But I, it gives me more reason to believe that there's no there there in this investigation. And they felt confident enough to go out there and do this because at the end of the day, after 10 months of looking at this and innuendos and, and uh, anonymous sources, we don't have one shred of evidence of any of the claims or allegations that have been made. Go ahead, Ed, in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, listen, Peter, I, I, I kind of agree with you, but I'd say it even more differently. I mean, and, and to Scott's point, I just object. Clapper resigned effective the inauguration because he didn't want to, he's a liberal and he, he was a liar and he wanted to be out. So he's out. And then Trump fired Sally Yates because she was incompetent. And now he's fired Comey. I actually think we have a president who's not afraid to do, and this was the point I was trying to jump in on, uh, on, Good point. on talking about, I was thinking of London. You know, a few uh, a few miles from a few miles from where um, um, our colleague is is, is uh, Assange, and the one thing Assange and Snowden have sn have showed, and by the way, I'm not advocating for either one, but uh, is that one fear we have to have is unaccountable bureaucrats who think yep. they're in charge of the way we live. Yep. And Comey, yep. when he sits in front of a Senate and says, "I'm the guy who's going to tell you how everything is. I feel nauseous. I'm going to drag Huma Abedin." <laughs> I think Trump looked up, and I think he did say, "This guy's out of hand. He's not. Yep. He thinks he's a combination of J. Edgar." Hoover and Elliot Ness, and I don't know who else. And you know what? He needs to go off the stage. By the way, listen, the FBI director, the next director, will have to be confirmed by Democrats and Republicans who will rip him or her up and down yeah. and then say to the American people, do you trust them? But by the way, Assange and Snowden showed we don't want an FBI that thinks it's a a above the law and above the world. They work for Trump. If you don't like it, vote Trump out in three and a half years. People will make that argument. And for now, the guy was out of hand. He's completely Complete now, and by the way, he's leaking again. Someone in the Senate or the yeah. FBI is leaking that Comey was asking for resources to do his investigation. Get off the scene, brother. Yeah. And by the way, the Senate, you think the Senate, McCain and the boys aren't going to come after the Russia investigation? This is, we have a leader, by the way, in America, finally, who's got the courage to not care what the swamp thinks and do what's right. And America, by the way, out here in Missouri, they're rejoicing. People love okay. it. They love and to see me, a guy let, like this. Let me go back to London. I mean, there, there have been people that have made the comparisons this to, to Watergate here, and uh, I don't want to betray my age exactly, but I was a bit of a tot uh, during the, the <laughs> Watergate. Wa wa that's a nice word. Um, and I watched the Watergate hearings. I cut school. I, I cut school, feigned sickness, and I, and I watched this, and I remember. They are not comparable in any sense at all whatsoever. Go ahead. I think the comparison is definitely very superficial. Uh, we don't have any kind of evidence at the moment of any uh, kind of collusion at, uh, at a deep level. Um, so without that evidence, to start comparing with Watergate, that's a very, very superficial um, comparison to be made. I, I would not make it. But I think it's important to see that the timing of this has been politically misjudged. And so President Trump, by doing it at this time, has actually brought on himself quite a lot of criticism okay. because it suddenly but, uh, looks, but, uh, even but, amongst I, I can even see your amongst point. Republican... I can see your point. But then, then, then there's a different question to ask. Mm. Is that, is, was there any good time to do this? 
I think he should have been fired well, right, on, exactly. on inauguration day. I think he should have been shown the door on inauguration day. Go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted well, you. Keep going. President Trump had the constitutional authority to remove him uh, on or after Inauguration Day immediately. He knew uh, he had criticized uh, Comey before. He had also praised him as a principled and independent uh, director. He had the authority to do so, but he chose not to do it at that time. If he had done it at that time, I don't think anybody would have objected. The key issue is that he's done it right now. That has drawn attention to this issue itself. And my own view is that I think there may well be a little bit of craft to this particular uh, timing as well. President Trump has got a very skilled uh, uh, way of dealing with the media. Very often he throws a few uh, bombs into the uh, public eye, and sometimes that is in order to basically yep. deflect or divert attention. And I think or, maybe uh, we have to look at that question. Or, a or bit to more. Con control the narrative. Absolutely. Scott, let me go to you. I'll win it before the break here. What I think is very interesting is, is just what we heard here is that there is a plan in play here, and they're trying to preempt this. They knew all of this was going to happen. It will, this is going to be for the next two or three news cycles. This is all we're, we're, uh, we're going to hear. Go ahead, Scott. Well, obviously, when it comes to uh, the firing of Comey, that should have happened, like you said, from the beginning. And when it comes to this, you know, uh, being uh, a, a news uh, uh, outlet for, you know, he's, he's basically acting like Nixon, that's ridiculous. I mean, there's no evidence whatsoever that the Russians had any kind of influence on the election. You know, no more influence than the Americans had on the French election uh, in, the, uh, in the recent election in France. Obviously, people in Russia were preferring somebody over uh, Hillary Clinton, and certainly they exposed a lot of information. Uh, in their news media that was absolutely necessary for the American people to hear. I said before, the Americans are starved for information from American media. The media was so far behind Hillary Clinton at the time uh, that we weren't hearing anything about the nefarious right, Scott, activities of Scott, how she was manipulating here. the DNC we've got, we've, and many other things. We have to go to go a ahead. hard break here. After a short break, we'll continue our discussion on Comey being shown the door. Stay with our team. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter LaBelle. To remind you, we're discussing Trump's firing of the FBI director. Okay, Ed, I'm going to go back to you in, in St. Louis here. Uh, in watching uh, Comey's last performance in front of uh, uh, Congress giving testimony, <laughs> He uh, was making references uh, to uh, Russia's involvement in the campaign. And it really struck me, it, it caught me flat-footed, is that he was actually in many ways mimicking that fall, uh, fake dossier that uh, well, it came up uh, yeah. a few months ago. Um, and com uh, even the, the most ardent haters of Russia and Vladimir Putin dismissed it out of hand. But I got the impression Comey was still using it as some kind of ledger. Um, and we do hear reports, and, and again, th these are intentional leaks from uh, uh, given to new, uh, news sources, uh, the, uh, the cable TV networks, is that Trump was angry about that. Well, I can understand why he would be angry about it, that if this director is going to be basing his investigations on this sexed-up nonsense dossier, that would bother anyone. Yeah. I think there's a connection there. Go ahead, Ed, in St. Louis. Well, I'm glad you asked that, actually. I was going to, uh, coming off of the break, I was interested in making a comment. Scott said something that triggered in my mind, so it, it fits together. I, I agree with you. That testimony, there's no reason that we should expect our president to not be attentive to what his FBI director does in testimony. And I thought the testimony, it convinced me that Comey was playing a out, an outsized public political role. You know, he was, he was admitting that he had to go and, and, and you know, he admitted, by the way, he's, he wasn't going to obey the rules of the Justice Department or the FBI, the Justice Department, and go do that press conference last year. He admitted all these things that he did. If I was Trump, I would have been like, this guy is out of hand. And one thing in particular, to, uh, to both points, both my colleagues, politics does play a role. We have an elected politician. Sure. That's the way it works. And sure. when Trump wrote the letter, the letter to, uh, to uh, Comey that referred to, thank you for telling me three times that I was, I'm not under investigation, Trump is careful. That was a way to frame the political debate and also make a point. Comey will have to agree or admit, I don't think Trump's 
going to be caught lying about it, I don't think, that, that he said that to Trump. And Trump was making a point. You're out there grandstanding, and you've already told me three times, why is this dragging on? I, I think that all wraps into it. And again, I think out here, where voters yeah. are, they appreciate a leader who's whacking away like they would want to themselves. It's really interesting. Let's go back to uh, interject. I think it's really interesting with what Ed ha had to say there, because it, uh, Comey's boxed in right now, because if he's asked under mm -hmm. oath, did he tell yeah. the president of the United States three times, then he mm -hmm. would be breaking federal <laughs> law, which would be a felony. I mean, it's an interesting way of phrasing it here. <laughs> I mean, but more broadly, uh, Interjita, if I can say with mm -hmm. you in London, I think what's one of the things that's happening, at least I hope is happening, is that we had under Obama an intensely politicized deal, uh, the Department of Justice and the FBI. And I, with the new Deputy Attorney General, as, you know, it was 96 to 4 in the Senate. I mean, he's pretty much mm. seen to have clean hands. Um, is this the, the process and a very, you know, quick and hard process to really start cleaning up at least these two departments that have been so heavily politicized? I mean, Jim Comey is basically, I mean, I hope his wife and kids love him because nobody else does now. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I think this uh, Washington uh, politics, uh, yes, it is politics, but the, actually the purpose of politics, uh, as far as the, the American uh, people are concerned and our understanding of the American democratic system is concerned, is actually to, to win election, appoint people into important positions and actually deliver on the, you know, to address the needs of the American people. Now, President Trump uh, is sworn to do that. Uh, the director of the FBI and uh, Attorney General and so on, they're also sworn to do that. But this kind of politicking which is going on in Washington is a complete distraction and diversion. And yep. I, this is where I say that actually it, a lot uh, more people are playing a big game here. And I think they're ignoring the fact that the, if you look at the election campaign of 2016, these were screams from the American people people that the politics was ignoring their needs and interests. And I'm afraid President Trump, Director Comey and the Democratic opposition and the corporate media are all continuing to play that game. And I think this is delegitimizing the American system I all in one big go again. I couldn't, well, I couldn't, no, no, no on, hang on, no, hang on, on here. Now. Hang on, Scott, okay. I think it's really interesting because I think what we should do is we need to fly you to the U.S. and we have to take the DNC and <laughs> lock them up in a room and they can't leave until they listen to what you just said, okay? I think what you had some real <laughs> words of wisdom <laughs> there. Mm. And because, you know, it's, it's really, gentlemen, it's really about relitigating the election. It's, that's what it's always been about. Because I don't think the Democrats and the media give a hoot about the country. They like the status quo. And this guy that's on Twitter is messing it up for him, okay? Go ahead, Scott. You wanted to jump in. I heard you chuckle. <laughs> Well, you know, obviously, when, when Comey was testifying, it was, you know, clear legi legitimizing his ineptitude. I mean, yep. this guy would, you know, knew very little about Russia, was repeating the, uh, uh, the, the rhetoric out of the investigation, the false investigations. I mean, this is, it, it, there's no evidence that was actually presented during the entire uh, hearing that was absolutely uh, incontrovertible, approving anything. And so what we have here is we have, obviously, politicizing the environment. You know, uh, Donald Trump, as much as he likes pie, he did not get caught with with his hand in the pie. That's what Richard Nixon did. He definitely got caught with his hand in the pie. Donald Trump didn't do anything wrong. He, he ran for president, and he unfortunately, he won. He won. He was our, he's our new uh, real estate mobster in chief. <laughs> this is a guy who is absolutely tied to the nefarious individuals around the country uh, who are absolutely uh, uh, you know, committing uh, the same amount of war crimes that Obama was committing. And this is not okay, a legitimate Peter, government. This is on, not Peter. the leader of the American people that I'd like to see. Okay, all right. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, it's Peter, a fact. I mean, you know, unfortunately, you've know, got individuals out there that are, right. that are politicizing Ed, it from the right as well. Let's let's I stay know. with the facts here, Ed. Let me go to you because it's, and I because and I, yeah. we always have, this program is always way too short. One of the things that really bothered me about Comey is that we know. Okay, we have all these innuendos about Russia. Okay, I know it's great for ratings. Rachel Maddow is making a fortune because of it. I think it's in a, it's very disgraceful too, and I think it's very dangerous for national security ultimately. It is disgraceful. But but you know, Ed, you know, we know one crime has been committed in all of this, and that was the unmasking of right. Flynn. Okay, exactly. and I, and you know, and exactly. you know what? Did we see that the head, of the the director of the FBI, lift one finger, you know, to to, to make uh, no. to make sure that we know 
that you know some that is going to be investigated and the person that did that's going to go to prison because any one of us can be fall victim up to that that I saw that hearing with Sally Yates and Clapper I was disgusted as an American and here was a guy that can't even defend himself Okay, we don't even know his side of the story. And his entire name career has been completely slurred. And everybody in that, in that hall went along with it. And I thought that was a disgrace to the Congress and a disgrace to the political system that the, well, exists in the U.S. Sorry if I went on too long there. Go ahead, Ed. No, no, no. But listen, listen, Peter, let me say what I think. And I, both both of my colleagues have said things that echo this. The election last year was not about uh, even the direction of the economy or anything else. It was about a man saying, I'm going to obey. You're going you're to laugh at this, maybe. I'm going to obey the law. And when it came to illegal immigration, when it came to uh, uh, the enforcement in the Justice Department, the <laughs> FBI, do, do, Donald, Trump has said, Donald Trump has said the law matters. The American people know right now that the game is rigged by the D.C. What insiders and against them. And when things. Comey wants Comey no but well Comey when Comey says you know I knew what the law was I'm going to go out and have a press conference and tell people what Hillary did but I'm not going to recommend indictment that's him choosing yeah. to be above the law for Hillary now and what Trump did was say look on the unmasking there's that's no correct. answer yet where who leaked and that's what who Trump leaked? is doing as well and when we get to the bottom what oh. doing what leaking classified material no, huh? no, 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 let me, let no. No, Trump should be actually holding her accountable too. Okay, and and I think that, you know what's really exactly. interesting here. Well, we're on it, our way, Scott. What Scott? Uh, what I think is really interesting here. The reason I why I hope you're right, but I don't think so. Scott, I think, Scott, I, I think he's too closely tied to that family. S Scott, hang on here. What okay. I think is interesting here Must. is that what what the fear is so much is that. You know, uh, Susan uh, Rice is going to end up testifying. We're going to find out all about all the unmasking, and we're going to know who was leaked to, and we're going to know all of this backstory here. And you know what? Russia is is uh, is a footnote to all of this because it's always been a front. Now. I, if there was meddling, give me evidence, okay? All I'm asking is for evidence. But I think there's a whole lot more behind the curtain, and that's why they're making this push, and they're, and they're putting all their eggs into one basket, Russiagate. Foolish, foolish, foolish. Go ahead, Scott. I'd say it's more like Wienergate when you get into Huma and you get into all the discussions around what Hillary Clinton was involved with, with the DNC of ne 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 nefarities uh, going on. The nefarious activities are, are just too broad to, uh, to actually uh, put into a, a small microscope here. There's just so many things going on, and unfortunately, Trump will be just like the previous administrations and won't hold the past administrations accountable because he's also being uh, uh, held accountable if he moves forward with the same type of activities. What he's done with the uh, military industrial complex in Yemen and Syria he'll uh, he'll actually be held accountable for too if any of the uh, future uh, presidents actually take note of the actual activities and hold people accountable for violating the Constitution article 1 section 10 and article 1 section 8 are clearly being uh, def uh, uh, violated on a daily basis in the United States so if you're a constitutionalist in the, in the United States like me you understand that this party politics keeps us divided and, and and uh, that's what's going on, unfortunately. And Trump is absolutely not representing uh, what, what, the uh, what the Constitution was written behind in the founding fathers of this, uh, of this country. So I believe that uh, what we're seeing at this point in the uh, United States is something that is, that is absolutely uh, just a tremendous uh, um, embarrassment. And I'm, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, people start to see the light. And thankfully, you know, programs like RT uh, are, are actually doing that. Interject. Well, thank you very much for that. Interject. What, Twenty seconds here. What I what bothers me so much here is that institutions and confidence in government are being eroded for these political games, and they're very vicious political games. Go ahead. Jump in. Last word. Okay. For the. Absolutely, and I think that is the heart of the matter. None of these things uh, really matter to ordinary American people. Exactly. Everyone is playing a game exactly. to project an image of being exactly. very competent and for the national interest, but actually Wall Street is back in the cabinet. The big banks are doing exactly what they wanted. Absolutely. President Trump is deregulating big pharma, big energy, big banks, and he's handed power back okay. to those people. All right, gentlemen. And he claimed he was going to take it away from we'll them. We'll see where it goes. We've run out of time. Many thanks to my guests in St. Louis, Tampa, and in London, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time, and remember, Crosstalk Rules.
I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.